Welcome to my channel. I'm Danny Marie AUC and welcome to my computer. <laughs> Today's video is the first in what I hope will be a really fun series that I am calling New Blind Tech. So in each episode, we will be exploring new or new-ish items in the blind tech world to spread knowledge about the product, then to spread awareness about the blind and visually impaired communities. You know, as usual, as usual. For most of these episodes, we will be at my computer and we will be chatting about all of the blind tech things. We'll be browsing their website and we'll, we'll just be exploring, exploring these items through the internet. Hopefully in the future, as my channel grows, I can get some of these items and show them off hands on. Tell you, tell you how, how they feel and how they smell and if they, if they work for someone who is visually impaired and we'll get the real details on these things. But for now, for now, we're going to hang out at my computer. So let's get into the very first episode of new blind tech right here. Welcome to episode one of New Blind Tech. Today, we are gonna be talking about Lego Braille bricks. Such a challenge to say, but here we are. For those of you who can see, I have the website pulled up on my desktop here, and we're gonna be exploring it a little bit. And I would have loved to get a hold of some of these items, by the way, but um, we'll see in just a few minutes why that's not going to be the easiest. Now, eventually, as my channel grows and as I become a more popular YouTuber, uh, maybe I can reach out to some of these companies and get some of these tools for testing. Like that is my hope that for you guys who are curious and maybe only able to invest in a few things that I can help you decide what might be best for you. So here we are introducing Lego Braille bricks. And there is, <laughs> Actually, I think I have my dark mode turned on. Let me show you guys what I use a browser extension called Dark Reader. So this website is normally um, normally has a white background and everything else is dark. But for the ease of my eyes and for some of you who also will be looking at this video physically, uh, let's all save ourselves a little um, a little eye power. OK, so the top of this website uh, has Lego Braille brick bricks. This website is all about Lego Braille bricks. It is www.legobraillebricks.com. That will be linked in the description below, don't worry. But uh, at the very top, we have our options, activities, facilitation, learning through play, about, and get bricks, which we will be checking out, don't worry. There is also Braille on here, which always cracks me up when they put Braille on a website. <sighs> And I did have to look up what these say. It, it literally says, welcome to our website, which is a little strange, but you know, whatever. Anyway, a fun and playful way to learn Braille. So I don't know about you guys, but I personally had Legos as a kid and I loved them. My brothers and I all played with them and built all kinds of creations and we had a great time. For them to combine Lego and Braille is just such a fun idea. Okay, we have an about section here and we have a learning through play. We're gonna click on about here and we're just gonna kinda, kinda check it out. All right, I am going to make this a little bit bigger so that I can read it. All right, so we have a video here. I don't know if I'm gonna get copyright struck for playing this for you guys, but um, we're, gonna, we're gonna give it a whirl. For blind people, Braille is literacy. The only other real option for someone who's got no sight is to listen. And by listening, you lose a lot of spelling, grammar, punctuation. I started learning Braille when I was five. It empowers me and enables me to do things that I would have never been able to do before. Children dislike making mistakes. If you're using a Braille machine, your mistakes are there, written large. Children love being able to make something and make it if it's wrong and make it again. And that is the important thing that Braille Bricks does. And it is making mathematics, English, Spanish, French, literacy far more accessible than it ever was before. 
Well, at the moment, we've just been multiplying, dividing. Including? Including the... Uh, decimals. And decimals. Which is quite challenging. Very challenging. Hundreds, tenths, units. It's having something tangible that you can rearrange in so many ways. It's ridiculous that all it does for us really is give us convenient access to moving letters around, but that opens up so many doors and that's a wonderful thing. Lego Braille bricks make learning more fun. I gave them to my students just to see how they would get on with them. Couldn't get them off them. <laughs> we spent the whole lesson making up games and playing with them. It was just such an engaging and fun time. So in this video, basically, they were speaking with teachers and students who had all used this. Okay, so essentially these are traditional four by two lego bricks but the top i think it's the top yes the top section where normally there would be six raised pegs is what is used to represent the braille alphabet and the bottom two pegs is used for printing the actual letter number or symbol so that those with vision can read it and that's kind of what makes this really interesting is that it, it seeks to it seeks to provide a space and a tool to where kids with vision can also play with kids without vision. And as we get more into this, there are provided games that you can uh, that you can play with these Lego bricks, and it was really fun to read through those. So we're gonna go back home. I think that's the end of this page. Oh, there's a little bit more. Basically, it goes on to talk about the Lego Foundation and they're, you know, a nonprofit. They seek to inspire and develop the builders of tomorrow. <laughs> but um, you get the idea. You can find them at legofoundation.com if you guys want to learn more about that. Um, I love the real equivalency in this video that they gave uh, for Lego bricks. Essentially, they said they just provide a way for children to have Lego bricks and move them around, which to me brought to mind alphabet blocks, okay? Most of us are familiar with alphabet blocks, whether we grew up with sight or not, honestly. And I, most of these blocks are tactile in some small way, but uh, it's not completely accessible to those who are visually impaired or blind, especially if you have small alphabet blocks. And I do have a small set of alphabet blocks from, I believe, Melissa and Doug. And they're wood, they're tactile, but they also have printed things on them that is, you know, has zero, uh, zero texture to it. And the idea that something like this, at least for older aged kids, because they are Legos and they are small pieces, could allow children of different abilities. And I'm not saying that to say differently abled because we all, we don't know how we feel about that term, but, um. Kids who can see, kids who may cannot see, kids who have less vision somewhere in between can play together. And that is what makes this so special for me. Okay, we're gonna go back home. We've looked in the about section. We have learning the play. Let's see, what else do we have here? Okay, there are activity finders, here we go. We're gonna look at some of the activities and then we are going to go check out um, how to get Braille bricks. Okay, let's look at this apple trees one. This sounds simple enough. I, I actually did read through this one. This is adorable. So <clears throat> the there are Lego platforms that you use to play with these Lego bricks on. For those who have vision or those who had vision and have since lost it and have played with Lego bricks, it's the equivalent to the big green flat platforms that we would all build things on as kids. So whether that be houses or towns or trees or whatever. So that is the space where you can secure the braille bricks to just as you would a regular Lego brick. And it allows you to create words, but still pull a letter out if you maybe misspelled something and rearrange the blocks easily. So let's talk about this activity. This activity is called Apple Trees. It's about 10 minutes and you can do it with just one participant, which, you know, is always a good thing. Let's play. There are four instructions here. One, pick an apple tree from the bowl. Two, look for the studs on the brick. They are the apples. The smooth part of the brick is the trunk. Three, attach the apple tree to the base plate. That's the flat, the flat piece I was just describing. 
Make sure your tree is not upside down. Four, plant as many trees as you can to make an orchard. So how to prepare. <laughs> so one, have a plate, the base plate. 10 letter bricks G. The letter G in Braille is, I believe, 1.1.2.4 one dot one dot dot and dot five. I hope I got that order right. So it's the top four. So essentially you have a smooth bottom half and four dots at the top, which for smaller children who are not yet, not yet spelling things out and really recognizing those letters, they can still join in on the fun and feel those dots at the top and it becomes an apple tree. So another um, variation is to also include other bricks that aren't just G's. That could allow the child to have some variety in his or her apple trees or it could allow them to make this, um, make this activity a little more challenging. They have to pick out specifically the apple trees. It even goes into detail to describe what, um, what skills it attempts to encourage. We have cognitive, so recognizing spatial relationships, creative, express self, thought, express self through craft, artwork, explore various crafting activities, physical, develop hand and finger strength, emotional, implement an artistic project, and then social, distinguish between personal and collective interests. Did you know, at the bottom it says, did you know facilitating children's learning is different from thinking of teaching as delivering content because the goal is for the young children to understand concepts and develop a breadth of skills they can apply. Okay, so there are tons of these activities, tons. And with varying age levels, so let's see. We have pre-braille, we have braille. Let's see what others we have here. I might have to scroll back up and see. Yes, we'll have to scroll back up and see. But the fun part is, here we are. Braille activities, here's pre-braille. We have manipulation, orientation, and constellation. And for braille activities, we have characters, literacy, and numeracy, which I did not know numeracy was a word, but clearly that's uh, dealing with numbers. But the children in the video were doing, you know, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and even long division with these braille bricks, which I find pretty impressive because I wouldn't initially think that it would be an easy thing to do with these, but seeing it is pretty fascinating. Okay, let's let's go back home. And I see the menu over there to the right, which I completely missed. Okay, it's not working. We're going to go to get bricks and see what the deal is here. Why, why can't I order my own bricks? Okay, this is what the toolkit contains when you can get a hold of one. It contains braille bricks, a minimum of 300 bricks in five Lego colors, three base plates on which to work, a brick separator. Oh, that sounds like a handy tool I could have used as a child. Okay, the box cover contains a helpful overview of the alphabet and symbols in the particular in the particular national braille language. The five signature Lego colors are randomly used for the bricks. Only math symbols are all white. Fascinating. The Lego Braille Bricks Toolkit will be distributed free of charge to select institutions, schools, and services catering to the education of blind and visually impaired children. In each country where we launch, the LEGO Foundation works with an official partner in the blind community. The partner will handle both distribution of the toolkits and support localization and training of the teaching concept presented on this website. To get access to the LEGO Braille toolkits, you must be eligible to receive it. Uh, so interestingly enough, it is specifically for Good Lord, they have a ton of countries. So it's specifically for uh, learning institutions and things like that. Uh, we regretfully cannot, okay, yeah, here we go. Mm, yeah, please contact the office official partner in your country for more information. Should your country not be mentioned, then we regretfully cannot cater to you at this point in time. And they plan to introduce it in more countries later, but they have quite a list. We have 
Australia, Austria, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, New Zealand, Norway, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, the Netherlands, United Kingdom, and United States of America. So let's check this out. I'm in the United States, so I'm gonna see. Ooh, okay. American Printing House. I am actually familiar with them. Uh, it'd be really cool if I could get a sample kit for you guys, but I don't think it's gonna happen today. Um, if you guys are interested, we could do an episode one part two where I try to get a hold of a set of these bricks and sort of explore what they're all about and um, show them off in person. Because we can, there's, there's pretty good pictures on the website, but um, it's just, I'd like to be able to see if someone who's visually impaired would have a hard time reading the blocks because I feel like I would. I feel like that would be an issue for me. And I do not know Braille. That is something I do want to learn, but I do not currently know any braille other than what I've looked up on the internet. And um, it would just be interesting to know, to really hold it in my hands and feel it and see it up close. And So anyway, let me know if you guys would be interested in a part two. Let's go back to the home page here. I do find it pretty exciting that they are providing these free it is not taking me home when I click that. But, um, I guess they don't have a home page designated. It's just the about page. Anyway, let me know. Let me know about part two. If you guys would be interested, drop me a comment, send me a message on social media. Definitely like this video if you've enjoyed it. We will be doing more videos like this. Uh, hopefully in the future, I will be able to actually have products in hand. But as you guys know, I am still a growing channel up to around 170 subscribers as of the making of this video. And I, I hope we can grow that and do some more fun things. But for now, for now, we are limited by the means at which I have available. <laughs> so, Keep listening and looking out for more. I have a few more of these episodes planned. And let me go, let me know if you guys come across any other new blind tech you would like me to explore online for now. But eventually, eventually in person with hands on reviews and things like that. I look forward to doing all of that. And I look forward to hearing what you guys think of this video format. I know it's not, um, uh, I mean, it, it might be better than listening to your screen reader go through a website, but I'm not sure if it's, um, I'm not sure how fun it is. So you just, you let me know. You know, I am always here for your opinions and your thoughts and your suggestions, always. So until next time, stay curious as always. Bye.